All right. I'm just adjusting my camera because again, it likes to just zoom in ridiculously <laughs> on Facebook Live, but it's all good. All right, Queens. Welcome to another episode. I'm going to go live whilst I'm recording my episode to give you as much value as possible. So it's going to be a juicy one today. Today I want to talk about the truth about people judging you, right? So the fear of judgment is so real. I'm sure you've experienced the fear of judgment and to be honest, like 99.9% .9 of people in the planet are fearful of other people judging them right and it can stop us from doing what we want to do it keeps us small we hide away and we don't do the things we truly want to do because we're allowing the fear of judgment ruin our life or rule our life and it's time to stop allowing the fear of people's judgment stop you from living your life how you want to so in today's episode you're going to learn about how to stop being worried and fearful of people judging you and also you're going to learn about the two types of, of judgment fear so it's going to be abandonment and rejection so we're going to dive into that and if continue listening or of course if you're not watching this live and you're listening to it on the podcast tune in to listen to how to be, fr be free from people judging you right and how to feel amazing and happy and free so let's dive in I'm sure we've all experienced judgment, like I said at the beginning of this, at least once in a while, or maybe you experience that every day. You say things like, oh, what would my mum think? I used to say that a lot. Oh my gosh, what would my mum say? <laughs> or like if you're putting a live video out, like what are people going to think of me? People are going to judge you all the time. So people may be judging me right now as I'm speaking, and that's okay. It didn't used to be okay for me, but now that is okay. So whether you are aware of it or not, you're judging all the time. So if I said to you, what do you think about this bottle? And of course, if you listen to the podcast later, you can't see the bottle, but it's a white bottle with like unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes and diamonds and all the things on it. Whether you like it or not, you're judging. So even having an opinion on something is a form of judgment. So it can be positive judgment or negative judgment. And there's a personal development program I went on. Um, I mean, what haven't I been on? I'm always investing in myself. And it's called the Landmark Forum. And what I learned there, and this changed my life when I really learned this, and I'm going to teach you this today, is as human beings, we are meaning-making machines. So we have to make something or everything mean something. We can't just be like, okay, well, this is a bottle and that's the end of it, we say things like, oh, that's a nice bottle because it's got unicorns on. Or you might say, well, actually, I think it's ridiculous having a bottle with unicorns on. Because we have to make things mean something because as humans, we're meaning-making machines. Imagine a guy in a sports car and imagine a homeless guy. And the guy in a sports car is pulled up and he's at some traffic lights and the homeless guy's on the street and the homeless guy is looking to the guy in the sports car and he's like turning his nose up at him, like pulling a face at him, like the guy in the sports car. And now imagine the guy in the sports car judging the homeless person, you know, and making a face and pulling a face at the homeless person. Which judgment is better out of the two? The, the answer is there's not one judgment that are better because they're both judging each other and neither is right or wrong. We just have to make things mean something because we're human beings so that's what people do so going to i'm going to give you a way out of this so you can put the fear of judgment behind you okay so i'm going to ask you a question a few questions but one question i'd like to ask you is what do you think of donald trump for example or what do you think of corona or what do you think of chocolate ice cream, right? <laughs> Most of you are gonna have an opinion, in fact, all of you will have an opinion, aka a judgment on anything that I ask you. And everyone's judgment is gonna be different. Some people will have the same opinion, other people will have different opinions. It's like, you know, 
the saying a picture speaks a thousand words because you can look at a picture and 50 people can see something different. Everyone's judging all the time and everyone has different opinions of the same thing all the time. Like for example, the first coach I had, the first coach I invested in, um, I loved her voice and her accent and I shared um, one of her podcasts with my best friend one time and my best friend replied like, oh my God, I can't get, I can't listen to her because her voice is the most annoying voice I've ever heard. And I was like, what? I love that about her. I actually really like her voice, which is one of the things that drew me to want to work with her because I liked the way she spoke and the way she, like, she just, you know, the sound of her voice. So it was so funny that everyone has so, so many different opinions. But if you think of, like, global leaders in this field of personal development, you know, global icons such as Tony Robbins or Oprah, most people have heard of those, those two people, People are judging even the famous people negatively and positively all the time, regardless of who this person is, regardless of what they do. Like I absolutely love Tony Robbins, but I know quite a few people in the personal development space that aren't so keen on Tony Robbins. And at first I was like, what? How can you not like Tony Robbins? But it's okay that people have judgments. Or I don't know, music, Elvis Presley or the Beatles or whatever, people are gonna have judgments about people who have quote made it, people who are famous, people who are glo global icons. So people are even gonna judge like Oprah and Tony Robbins. You'll get, I'll get to the point at once and kind of almost repeating myself over and over again. But if we spend our whole life trying not to be judged, we are completely wasting your life away because we judge unconsciously all day long. We judge consciously, we judge unconsciously. We, we're judging, we're meaning-making machines. People judge people all the time. And there's two biggest fears that we have, like I mentioned at the start of this, um, the, the fear of judgment. It's the fear of abandonment, which is rejection. You know, this, the fear of being rejected. And then you've got the fear of inadequacy. So am I enough? Am I good enough? Both of those fears, which is at the root cause of nearly every human being's action or not action because of the fear of judgment, they're both based around judgment. So the, the fear of inadequacy and the fear of um, abandonment, rejection, and that's what drives our behavior or stops us from doing the things we want to do. And these kind of judgments, they're like a poison in our society and they massively affect our lives. It used to affect my life massively, hugely. I would never want to do a live because I would be scared of what people would think. Like, what if I messed up? What if I had to look at my notes more than I wanted to? Like, what if, what if, what if? Like, it doesn't matter. People are going to judge you anyway. So I'm just out here sharing and hoping it's going to benefit somebody. I know it's going to benefit somebody. But we, we let judgment hold, hold ourselves back. So it used to hold me back, like I said, with my business. It used to hold me back being vulnerable with my partner because I used to be judgmental of my own body. So I used to decide that wh whoever I was with would also be judgmental on me. So if we're, if we're keeping ourselves small from the fear of being judged, that's actually quite selfish if you think about it. Because if we're keeping ourselves small and not doing the things we want to do, not helping the people we want to help, that's actually quite selfish because we're thinking of ourselves and we're allowing our fear to lead the way instead of like taking fear along with you and just instead of it being in the, in the passenger seat or even the driver's seat, we're putting it in the back seat because fear is always going to be there. But let's dive, dive a bit deeper into abandonment, abandonment then and rejection. So, you, you know, when you, you have a fear of being rejected, the question you ask yourself, maybe subconsciously, consciously or unconsciously, am I going to get rejected? That's a, a genuine fear, whether that's if you're going on a date with a man or a woman, or whether that's like joining a new friendship group or whatever, like joining a new gym and like wanting to fit in in the crowd, you're worried about being rejected because who doesn't want to be liked? As humans, we want to be liked because it goes back to, well, who is in our genetics, it's who we are because back in the day, like when before we had houses and all this society, 
we lived in tribes and actually if we wasn't a part of the tribe then it means we could probably die so if we was rejected by our tribe it rejection equals possible death and it is that dramatic so that's why it's so ingrained in us to be scared of rejection you know so it's it's a definite it's a fear that's okay to have but I'm here to show you that it doesn't need to be ruling your life and you can let that go. So I have a few questions for you. Have you ever been rejected before? So I'm sure the answer is yes. So my next question, have you ever rejected anyone? So have you rejected anyone before? So maybe you got asked out on a date and you were like, no, thank you. I'm just not feeling it or whatever reason. Um, has a homeless person asked you for money before and you've, and you've said no or you've ignored them, right? That's you rejecting somebody, okay? So if this is where it starts to get funny, I think. If you know that you reject people, all the time, which means that other people reject people all the time. You've been caught up in rejection before and most likely experienced rejection yourself. It's what people do, it's how we show up as humans. The fear of rejection, it paralyzes so many people. But if people judge people, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because it's just so like, when you get this, it's just like mind blowing. If people judge people, wouldn't it be unreasonable to think that you won't ever be judged or rejected? So I'm just gonna say that again. If people judge people because that's what we do, isn't it unreasonable to think that you won't be rejected? I know that not everyone will love me, right? When I, um, when I got my head around that, because I so desperately wanted to be liked, that's a huge part of my journey, was using my body and my appearance in order to like try and get people to like me. Once I realized that no matter what I did, not everyone is gonna love me and not everyone's gonna like me, I finally became free to be who I am and to share my message. Like I'm very energetic, I like to talk a lot, I'm not everyone's cup of tea and that's fine, like I'm totally okay with that. Do you like tea or do you like coffee? I personally hate coffee. I can't stand it. I love the smell of coffee, but the second I taste it, no. Whereas you might absolutely adore coffee. Like when you make a cup of tea, you might like a little bit of milk in or a lot of milk in. You might like sugar or no sugar. You might like sweetener or whatever. You get the gist. Not everyone has the same cup of tea. Not everyone likes coffee. Not everyone is gonna like you. And that's okay. There's nothing to be fearful of because People are going to reject you every single day and that could be due to your skin colour, your hair colour, your religion, your sexual preference, the car that you drive, what size your body is, what you say, what your lifestyle is like. I mean the list is endless. The list is endless. People are going to judge you and reject you every single day just like you judge and reject other people every single day. Right? And you're not thinking about, well, it's not normal or it's not, I've not come across this. If you reject someone, it's unlikely that you're thinking about them for the next like month or so. You reject them or you have an opinion and then it's done and gone. That's it. You just continue with your life. So that's how other people will perceive you as well. Some people are going to like you. Some people are going to find you neutral and some people are not going to like you. And either is okay. Like if I asked you another question, like what do you think about people who drive sports cars, for example? Or what do you think about someone who's in prison? Automatically, there's gonna be judgments come to your, to your mind. You can't help it because again, we're meaning making machines as, as humans. We judge all the time. But my question to you is like, when you're judging these people, like maybe someone in a sports car um, or someone in prison, like, where's that judgment come from? Like if maybe if you was in prison before or you've drove a sports car or you had a sports car before, your judgment's gonna be different because you've experienced that thing. It's so crazy. Think, think of a podcast that you don't like. You're not allowed to include mine because I'm guessing if you're listening or watching this, you kind of get something from me else you wouldn't be watching or listening right now, okay? So just think of something, a podcast or a YouTube video that you watch and you was like, meh, don't really like it. Or like I said before, Donald Trump, 
what do you think about him? What kind of music do you like? If I said to you heavy metal music, what comes up for you? Is that a hell yes or is that a, oh no, I don't like that at all? Or kind of what movies do you like? I love like sci-fi movies, kind of like Harry Potter and Marvel movies and superhero movies. And my amazing friend Lottie in the Netherlands, she hates stuff like that. So when we meet together to watch a movie, it's always a chip flick. And it's just interesting to see that, you know, what I like isn't what she likes. What I like isn't what you like. And that goes the same for you as, as a person. Not everyone is going to like you. And now it's becoming obvious that you judge all day long and people judge all day long. People judge, right? And I know I've said the word judge a million times. If not being judged it is one of your biggest fears that you and pretty much everyone else on this planet has, yet you judge on a daily basis. I don't know about you, but I find that pretty ironic. So you're scared of being judged, I get it, but you're judging everyone every day and other people are judging everyone every day, yet we're keeping ourselves small because we're scared of being judged. It doesn't make sense. Quite funny if you think about it. And I've got another question for you. This is really powerful one. So really think about this, or if you can journal this, how many people have to accept you or not reject you before you're okay letting go of the fear of people judging you? So I'll ask that again. How many people have to accept you or not reject you before you're okay letting go of the fear of people judging you. So maybe it's 10 people that have to accept you and tell you that they love you and you're enough as you are. Or maybe it's a thousand people that have to say you're okay as you are, or that's good, or I approve. Maybe it's a million people. Maybe it's like 7 billion people, however many people are on this planet. Do they need to accept you in order for you to like feel good enough? Really powerful questions. So the biggest takeaway for you in this is to be okay as you are right now. Because again, there's always going to be someone who likes you, someone who's just neutral, and someone who doesn't like you. And that's okay. Why would you judge anyone else? Or why would someone else judge you anyway? Because we're people, as people, we're meaning-making machines. Each and every one of us, I believe, are living out our own karma. So what I mean by that is every single person in this, on this planet right now has their own lessons to learn, has their own lessons to overcome. That's what I believe. And so if we, if we come back to that and know that, then someone who you class as maybe below you and you're judging them will leave them alone because they have their own life lessons to learn and you have your own life lessons to learn. So it doesn't make any sense to judge people knowing that we've got to come through stages, like through our soul stages, or whether you believe in that or not, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's supposed exactly where they're supposed to be in any given moment. Everyone's learning their own lessons. So you focus on your lessons and allow them to focus on their life lessons. Okay, now I want to talk a bit about the fear of inadequacy. The fear of not being good enough. This is another fear of judgment, the second fear of judgment. And you know, inadequacy comes from comparison. If you don't compare, you cannot be inadequate to anybody. So you have to compare in order to feel inadequate. And this is so toxic and it's poison in our culture today that the amount of people that compare themselves to other people inadequacy and I'm surprised I've actually said that without getting tongue-tied I'm very proud of myself inadequacy requires comparison and comparison requires putting people on a hierarchy so you've got people above you and people below you yet we're all equal as human beings we're all equal as human beings everyone has their own story we're all equal so I could just say to you, stop comparing right now, which maybe some of you might try, you might do it, you might listen, you might not. But the point of me helping you in this podcast, in this live, is for you to go away with like an aha moment, kind of like, oh my gosh, yeah, 
and like something shifts inside of you. That's my goal for you. So I have a few more questions for you. When will you know you're good enough? When will you know you're good enough? How many people will have to say you're good enough before you accept it and know that you're good enough? Okay. Of those people saying that you are good enough, what are the social economics of these people saying this? So are you only going to listen to people saying you're good enough if they're rich or famous or successful, whatever that means to you? What about if someone who was poor said that you was good enough, would you listen to them? Or what about someone who's unsuccessful in your terms, would you listen to them? Come back to remembering that we are all equal and judgment is going to happen no matter what. So let's say a checkout person in the supermarket, supermarket, what the, what the hell was that? In the supermarket says that you're not good enough. What about a lawyer who with a really um, posh degree? What about if a lawyer says you're not good enough? Who are you going to listen to most? Who are you going to allow what, whose opinion are you going to allow to affect you the most? You know, how are you weighing up each, each person's opinion? And how many people's opinions are enough? Like I said, is it 10? Is it three people? Is it a million people? And what are the educational levels needed of all of the people that do say that you're good enough? Okay, so what I want you to get from this is how absolutely ridiculous it is to allow your, dry, your, your life to be driven by the fear of judgments of other people. Like no matter who you are, no matter where you go in life, there will always be someone who is better or worse than you. There's always going to be someone who's prettier than you, cleverer than you, funnier than you, smarter than you, more successful than you, have a better car than you. The list is endless but you're also going to be better than people in every life area as well. There's always going to be someone better or more successful, whatever that means to you. And there's always going to be someone worse off. So if you go through life comparing yourself, you will never be good enough. Never. So do you want to, you know, waste your life away trying to be good enough when you're good enough already because you are you. There's always gonna be someone better. And if you're judging yourself by the externals, for example, the house, the car, the job, the holidays, that's a huge trap that you're setting up for your life to be unhappy. Because you'll never be happy if you keep judging yourself and comparing yourself to people and striving to be as good as who. And then there's always going to be someone better than you. So you're never going to be happy. So now you can see that you judge people and people judge you. And people, the funny thing is people try to avoid judgment and they think that's a really effective strategy by keeping small, by keeping themselves hidden, by avoiding judgment, which by the way, it's impossible to avoid judgment because even if you're keeping yourself small, and not doing the things you want to do. So in order not to be judged, people are going to judge you for doing that anyway. <laughs> That's why it's so funny. People are going to judge you no matter what you do. So if you're not doing the things you want to do for fear of being judged, people are going to judge you anyway for doing that. So the, the best and most effective way to let go of the fear of judgment is to accept fully accept that you're going to be judged all the time anyway. If you try to avoid being judged, that will keep you hidden, it will keep you small, and people will judge you for keeping yourself small and not putting yourself out there anyway. It's ironic. So show up for yourself, fully knowing and accepting that you're going to be judged anyway. Right, walk right into it face on. People are going to judge you, so you may as well go out there and have a good time and help people. Like, if I was letting fear of judgment rule my life, I wouldn't be sharing this with you. And there's quite a few people that I've been watching, so I must be helping some people, which is which is all that matters to me. So if instead of asking yourself, am I good enough, 
Start asking yourself, what does the world need from me in order to be a better place? How can I give myself to others in a, in a way that feels good for me? How can I share my knowledge? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be through your business. It can be through anything that you want to do that you've been scared to do because you've been keeping yourself small from fear of judgment. Maybe it's from, you know, you've desperately wanted to stop dieting and you're just so scared that you might put weight on. And then what will people think and all the judgments that there's so much around this, people are going to judge you anyway. Like when I was really small and really lean and really fit and, and whatever, my uh, fiance, Valta, he, he liked the look of me. Sounds like, a, like he's picking something in the supermarket, doesn't it? When he first met me, but he honestly said, I, you, I think for me, as in for him, you're too small. Like, I love you for who you are, but if you was to ask me, I would like someone who had more weight on them, right? So funnily enough, I now am a, I'm bigger than I was when I met him and he loves it. And it doesn't matter what he thinks anyway, but what I'm saying is um, what you think about yourself and the way you judge yourself isn't how other people judge you. I'm going to go to that in a moment because this gets really good in a minute. It's already good, but you know what I mean. So instead of asking, am I good enough? Start asking, what does the world need from me? So like my podcasts and my content and my lives that I do, it is far from perfect. Sometimes I get tongue tied. I make my own words up because I can't figure out what I want to say. It's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. Some people are going to like the fact that it's not perfect. Well, what is perfect anyway? Because they can relate to me. And some people are going to look and think maybe things like that's unprofessional. It doesn't matter. I don't care because I'm doing me and I'm helping the world in the best way that I know. And people are going to judge me and that's all good. But you know the biggest joke of all? Are you ready for this? I feel like I need to take a sip of water to leave you in suspense even more. One sec. And if I have any comments, I'm going to check them at the end. Are you ready for this? People aren't actually judging you, which completely contradicts what I've just said, doesn't it? But let me let me dig deeper into this. You think that they're judging you, right? And they may even tell you they're judging you, or this is what their opinion is. But what you're actually doing is you're reflecting back to them about what they're judging in you. So you're actually reflecting who you are back to themselves when they judge you. Just say that one more time because I didn't say it right the first time. So when you think people are judging you, they may say they're judging you, but actually you're reflecting who you are back to themselves when they judge you. So they're judging themselves by defining themselves as someone who has to judge. There's a quote by Budra I want to read. I'm going to say it two times because it takes a while to just, well, it might not, it might sink in straight away. But when you get this, your head's just going to be like, wow. Okay, so you're, are you ready? I am not who and what you think I am. You are who and what you think I am. So I'm going to say that again. I am not who and what you think I am, you are who and what you think I am. Can you get that? Like, if you get that, please just share in, in the chat box. That they're putting out the version of who they are into the world, and I'm the mirror for that. So what people think of you is none of your business. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. So do you have the right to judge others? Let's even ask ourselves this question. Because when you're judging someone, the harsher the judgment, the deeper the wound within you. So this just goes to show that even when people are judging you, they're not technically judging you because they're judging themselves and seeing you as the mirror. Like, oh my God, this is so good. Like when I got this. So the harsher the judgment, the deeper the wound within. So you are the harshest judge for yourself. So whatever degree you judge yourself, you're going to judge others to the same degree. So if you work on your self-love, 
your self-acceptance, your self-worth, all the juicy, amazing things that I talk about, it's unlikely that you will be judging other people because you stop to judge yourself because everyone is a mirror anyway. So good. So knowing that you're the harshest judgment of yourself and knowing that the to the extent what you judge yourself, you're also going to judge others, what degree of judgment from other people, knowing that people judge you all the time, what degree do you accept them judging you? So what I mean by this is like, are you happy for someone to judge you just 10%, like a little bit? Are you happy and can you take action if someone's judging you at like 50%, whatever that means to you? And the, the next question following from that is, how do you even know how much people are judging you? because you don't, unless they're going to say it, but we don't know, we can't read minds of every single person that we come into contact with. So you assume people are judging you the same way you judge yourself. This bit is so powerful. So if you have body confidence issues, if you like hate the way you look, and you go out into the world, this used to happen to me all the time, and someone, like there was a bunch of teenage girls or whatever, and they'll be laughing, I would all of a sudden just decide that they're, well, they're obviously laughing at me because I've got shorts and you can see cellulite or something, because I was judging the hell out of myself, I decided that everyone else was judging me in the same way, or when you get intimate with your partner, um, if you notice something you're not that happy about on your body you're just automatically deciding that your partner is going to notice that too because you're judging yourself that way but it doesn't work like that you know someone might um someone might say oh say you've got say someone's had their hair done again this happened to me when i had my hair dyed like white blonde i'm sure if you've been following me for a while go back and see the videos it's hilarious my hair was literally like white um, and I had that done and it was it was new colour and I was like, holy shit, this is like, I'm so not down with this. And I was walking the dog and I met some um, this guy who I'd not met before and he got speaking to me. And the whole time I was a bit conscious of like, oh my gosh, he's going to think my hair looks ridiculous. And of course he didn't because of course me being me, I had to like protect myself and bring up my hair colour, you know, it's a self protective mechanism to make sure that if he's laughing at me, then it's okay, because I'm also laughing at myself, right, I'm sure you've done that too. And he was like, Oh, my God, I love your hair. I thought what an amazing hair colour. So whatever we're judging about ourselves, the other people aren't judging that about us. But what we're judging about ourselves, we actually judge in other people. Can you see that everyone is a mirror analogy in this? And we're almost done. I'm just going to tell you a few more things or share with you a few more things. This is a really, really powerful question to ask yourself. What would your life look like a year from now if you started to take action knowing that you're going to be judged and it doesn't matter to you anymore? So knowing that you're going to be judged, knowing that you judge people and people judge you, Imagine a year from now, if you took action towards your dreams or whatever your goals are, knowing you're going to be judged, how different would your life look like in a year's time? And it gets easier, I promise you. Like I do lives now and I'm, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. If I mess up, whatever, I don't, it doesn't matter because I'm just giving my heart. I'm asking how I can help people and it really doesn't bother me. So it does get easier. But just like, just think about that. How would you how different would your life look in a year's time? And when you start showing up for yourself, however, that looks for you, you realize that actually nobody dies. The worst thing that can happen is you think you've messed up and that's it and you just learn from it. And that's it. And people are going to think you've done good. People are going to hate it. People are going to love it. And that it doesn't matter because people are going to think that anyway, I'm going to leave you with this, these three things. I am who I am, you are who you are, so just go out and be you and do what you love and make a difference in the world because you're going to be judged anyway. All right, I'm just going to check the comments. I don't know if people are still watching because I didn't get, I didn't see the comments. Yay, hello, good to be on my question. If you're still here, Elizabeth, I'd love to hear from you. Hey, my soul sister is on here. Laura's on here. 
Yay! Nice to see that you all comment in. I love you all so much. If you have any questions around this or any questions around anything, please just DM me. I love questions because I can kind of make a an episode from it. Thank you, Brittany. Yay! I love I love interacting with you guys as well. But it's so true. Everyone is going to judge anyway, so you may as well just like be yourself. And if you need help with that, if you want a you know a bit of support with that. If, if it's in the realm of food and body image, I have a free Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook watching this, I have a free group. I'll actually put the link when this live comes onto my feed. And I'd love to have you there. Okay, Laura, you're just tuning in. So I'm going to end it now, but then it's going gonna, it's gonna to come onto my feed as the live. So you can watch it from the beginning. All right, my beauties. But I would love to have you in my free Facebook group. It's called, wait for this name, Food and Body Freedom Queendom. I love that name. So I'd love to have you in there. If you struggle with body image, with food stuff, emotional eating, binge eating, it's a place to go where all of my content is there at your disposal. Like podcasts, I share things that I don't share on my usual feed to help you. So just let me know if you have any questions. I love you all and I will see you next week. Mwah. Mm -hmm.